The 7th of May marks the anniversary of the sinking of the Cunard liner Lusitania, which was torpedoed whilst approaching the island during World War I. But while Lusitania is famous for her sinking, she had a successful career prior to World War I. So in this video I want us to look at the background of Lusitania, what happened to her during the war and the aftermath of that disaster. Lusitania was one of a duo of Cunard ships that entered service in 1907, the other being Mauritania. Lusitania was built at the John Brown shipyard in Clydebank and entered service before Mauritania, which was under construction at Swan Hunter upon Tyne in Newcastle. Lusitania and Mauritania were built with the assistance of government funding. This assistance came with the caveat that the two ships should be constructed in such a way that they could be easily converted into armed merchant cruisers should the need arise. Lusitania entered service as the largest and the fastest liner to ever grace the North Atlantic, and she captured the transatlantic speed record from the German liners that had held it throughout the early 1900s. Lusitania's size of just shy of 800 feet plus her speed made her instantly stand out among the other ships on the North Atlantic trade. She was joined later in 1907 by Mauritania, which eventually eclipsed her in 1909 in terms of speed. But Lusitania remained a popular ship, and for repeat guests who were able to choose which ship they wanted to travel on, Lusitania was often selected over Mauritania as the preferred of the two. And a lot of this came down to her interior spaces being decorated in a lighter colour palette, giving her a more airy appearance uh, than what was found on board Mauritania, which used darker wooden interior spaces. Lusitania and Mauritania's speed was largely credited to their turbines. This was a relatively new technology that was being used in ocean liners at the time, and they were the largest ships in the world to employ turbines when they entered service. They went on to form what was known as the Cunard Ocean Greyhounds, two fast ships on the North Atlantic run. And in 1914, they were joined by a third ship, the larger Aquitania, which allowed them to operate a three-ship transatlantic service. All three ships operated on this civilian service until the outbreak of World War I. At the outbreak of World War I, the government requisitioned all three of the Cunard Express liners, Aquitania, Mauritania and Lusitania. But unlike Mauritania and Aquitania, which went on to see military service as both armed merchant cruisers and then troop ships and hospital ships, Lusitania was never actually put into military service. Rather, she was returned to Cunard with the expectation that she should be used on a reduced monthly passenger service across the Atlantic. This was important for the British government to keep lines of communication as well as trade and commerce open and allow for passengers to move between Great Britain and the United States, which at the time was neutral during World War I. It was felt that Lusitania's speed would be her greatest protection against enemy threats. Even though the ship was going to be sailing into some of the most dangerous waters on the Atlantic, those surrounding Great Britain, where the U-boat threat was ever present. Despite the reliance on her speed, however, the Lusitania was slowed slightly due to the closure of one of her boiler rooms. This was done because there was a shortage in the supply of coal, which was required across the British war effort. Nevertheless, it was felt that the Lusitania would be able to outrun any U-boat threat. Further additions were made to the ship to help disguise her Cunard heritage, and this included the painting out of the Cunard red and black from the funnels to give Lusitania a slightly altered external appearance. With this, she set sail on the transatlantic service, which as I mentioned was a monthly service, reduced from the usual schedule that Cunard was operating prior to World War I. Lusitania was able to successfully complete a number of these transatlantic crossings, with her last successful voyage taking place in April of 1915. That saw her arrive in New York in preparation for the turnaround for her return journey to the United Kingdom. Lusitania's return journey was scheduled to depart on the 1st of May, and there were sailing schedules in the American newspapers which would advertise the departure times of the various ships that were doing transatlantic crossings. In the Lusitania's case, this was included in the Cunard sailing schedule, under which the Imperial German Embassy would place notices advising passengers that if they were travelling on British flagged ships, they would be in danger. Despite this threat, there was high confidence in Lusitania and there were very few cancellations for her final voyage. She departed New York on the 1st of May on time under the command of Captain Turner, a veteran of the Cunard Line. As the ship was approaching the Irish coast near the old head of Kinsale, she was hit by a torpedo fired by U-boat U-20. This caused two explosions. The first was described by passengers on board as a thud 
sort of like a heavy door being slammed. But it was followed shortly afterwards by a second almighty explosion, which rocked the ship, caused her to instantly take on a list to starboard, and also resulted in one of the lifeboats being knocked off its davits. Captain Turner was on the bridge at the time, and he remained on the bridge of the ship and ordered the lifeboats to be prepared for lowering. However, due to the list that the ship had taken on, it was very difficult for the crew to man the lifeboats, or even to launch them in many cases. Additionally, the Lusitania lost electrical power early in her sinking, which meant that things like elevators stopped working and all the lights on board the ship went out, making it very difficult for those in the lower parts of the ship to make it up to the lifeboat deck. Lusitania sinking was very fast. In fact, she sunk in less than 20 minutes, with a loss of over 1,200 lives. 20 minutes is a very short time frame for a ship of that scale to sink. Just think, what were you doing 20 minutes ago? From the coast of Ireland, locals could see this whole catastrophe unfolding before their eyes. Local fishermen and other people who owned boats went out to save those who had survived. But unfortunately, the frigid conditions in the water meant that many people succumbed to the elements, even after escaping the ship itself. The sinking of the Lusitania was a highly controversial topic, and the aftermath focused heavily on both sides of the war on the presence of the second explosion. On the British side, this was used as evidence that the German Navy had fired multiple torpedoes into a civilian ship and was used in various ways to get people to enlist into the war effort. On the German side, the presence of the second explosion was used as evidence that the Lusitania was carrying munitions from the United States to Great Britain, and that, they said, explained the second explosion. It's largely thought that even if Lusitania had been carrying munitions for the British war effort, it wouldn't have caused the second explosion at the scope in which it did to cause the ship to sink. There are two main theories as to why the ship suffered that second almighty explosion. The first is that the torpedo hit an empty coal bunker and ignited the coal dust that was inside the ship, which caused it to explode. The second is the design of Lusitania's propulsion system, which saw high pressure steam move from the boilers down to the turbine rooms along the outer hull of the ship. This could have been hit by the torpedo and due to the high pressures would have caused the area to explode. Despite the fact that Lusitania sank in relatively shallow water, she did sink with the damaged side facing the sea bed, which makes it very difficult to access the ship to gauge exactly what happened. And the debate rages on even over 100 years later. It is often said that the sinking of the Lusitania led the United States to enter World War I. There were over 100 Americans on board the ship when she went down. But this isn't the full story. The United States didn't enter the war because of Lusitania, but what it did do is it changed the public perception in America about the lethality of the war. And this, in combination with a number of other factors, did eventually lead to the Americans entering the war on the side of the Allies. Cunard's other express liners, Aquitania and Mauritania, went on to serve during World War I as both troop ships and hospital ships, and were eventually returned to Cunard's service. If you'd like to know more about their story, check out my website, or leave me a comment below, and if there's enough interest, I'll make a video about those express liners after World War I. The sinking of Lusitania had a great impact on the people in the city of Cove nearby where she went down. And in 2015, on the 100th anniversary, a special commemoration was held in that city along with the passengers and crew from on board Cunard's Queen Victoria to pay their respects to those who lost their lives at sea. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in more maritime history, check out my maritime history playlist. And I'll see you in the next video.